go lock on the door open. Why did you run into your cat? I saw it in the movie once. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you think you're doing? Setting out our sleeping bags. Oh, no, you don't. I sleep over there. Hey, what's the big idea? We're taking a big enough for sleeping. You're not a supervisor. You don't need any hanky panky going on. In this creepy place? Not in your life. Aw, Charlene. No arguments, boys. Sleep over there. Don't worry, Larry. You'll always have me. Trip. <laughs> At least the floor's clean. I don't want my sleeping bag to get dirty. Fears can be so untidy. The janitor must have mopped up this afternoon. Why is it so cold in here? I probably like cost too much for these auditorium over there. I know where the furnace room is. It's in the basement. Want me to go fire it up? No way. I don't want you sneaking around in the dark ready to jump out at us. I'll be warm enough to plunge them inside in my sleeping bag. I've never been to a slumber party before, especially with girls. <laughs> <laughs> don't get any ideas calling. That's not why we're here. The only reason I went along with this nonsense is to keep the rest of you out of trouble. It's not my fault I got this assignment for the school paper. But I really appreciate you guys coming to help me out. I think this is a great idea. Instead of just interviewing the people whose stuff got taken out of the lockers, we're going to the scene of the crime itself. Yeah. A good reporter goes to the primary sources to the bathroom. Even if it means staying out on a school night. I still think this may be a great summer party. Ooh, I'm out for ventilator! Keep it up, Colin. You get to sleep in the parking lot. Out in the rain? No way! Stay right here! Slumber parties be a lot safer than sleeping on the stage trying to see why things keep popping up on it. Come on, you guys. I really need your help trying to figure out the mystery of the locker shocker. What's the solve? I mean, we spend the night in this dark, be scary in the auditorium, and if a locker doctor comes by, we'll nap it. Or her. But what if it turns out to be something really weird? You're right! There is something weird here! What is it? Colin! Got a 
selling this book. And one year before, Peter Ibsen had killed his parents with the old carving knife and jumped off Dead Man's Cliff. Oh my goodness! And now, Charles had this book. And for the first homework assignment, Mr. Lucifer assigned them to read the story called Mistreated. Charles ran home and decided to get his homework book really quick because it was a great TV night. And CIS was That's important. <laughs> so, he goes home, he opens his book, and he starts reading the pages. And soon he can't keep his eyes off the sword. He starts getting really mad or angry for some reason. And just as he finished his story, his parents come home. Charlie, come down! I know what's going to happen! You let him finish his story. I'm almost done. So now, his parents come home. And he goes downstairs, and with a weird smile on his face, he goes into the kitchen and he grabs the old carving knife. I knew it! Never made it to the big time. That's 
That's a lot of ghosts. Every single production we've put on has had something weird that nobody can explain. That can make a good angle for my story. Okay with me. 
I sleep better in the dark. Just don't take it too far. Just over here by this wall. So what's new, Bill? Not much. How about you? Not much. Oh. Um. So you're in that term paper yet? No, I'm probably waiting till the last minute. Yeah, me too. Um. Oh. Heard Bert Dreamer happening. Colin? Yeah, I know. We just used to do the show I didn't know what they were dreaming of. Hot stuff. Some friend you are. I, I guess I could dream about Bobby. I had a cheerleader.
you're about to die. Knock it off, you two. She's scared enough as it is. Don't worry, Kelly. I'll watch out for you. Thanks, Paul. <coughs> Maybe not. Let me see that light. Stop. That stuff wasn't here before. I stayed awake the whole time. You were alone. Well, someone or something put these books in the jacket here. Oh my goodness. Do you think it could be? Who else? Well, the locker stopper. <laughs>
we know he's not a thief. How do we know that? There's money in his pocket. And he has plenty of time to take it if he had wanted to. So what do we do now? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I know what I'm going to do. Is food all you ever think about? No, sometimes I think about telling something. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, you can never guess what this belongs to. If you say Peter Ibsen or something, I'm greedy! Who's Peter Ibsen? It's from a ghost story Larry told. Whose book is it? Stephanie Virgil's. That's the second time her books have disappeared. Why would a locker stalker rob her locker twice? Not really wrong. Trying to sleep. 